Good morning, Matt. Hey, Rick. What's going on, bud? You, buddy. Absolutely everything. I don't everything. know if you heard, but there was uh, some kind of a political activity last week. Yeah, I heard somebody somebody got elected. They did. I think. think. Yeah, right. I don't know. Protest is elected. So I don't know. How do I? How would I know? Like I don't know anything. I thought you know people. I don't know anyone. You have met many leather bound books. <laughs> I do. <laughs> kind of My a house smells of leather bound books. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Listen. Uh, speaking of that, like what we're going to talk about today is uh, the title of the podcast is Two Sides of the Coin," and so really, what that means is. Things are pretty wacky right now, as we're going to talk wacky. about. Yeah, yeah, pretty wacky. But just like there's two sides to every coin, there's two sides to that. So things might look gloomy and negative right now, mm-hmm. but we're going to present maybe the upside of some situations that maybe some of the gym owners or trainers that we're talking to are going through right mm-hmm. now, just so that it hopefully reframes, you know, give you a new frame of reference, hopefully a little bit of a positive uh, hit, right? Mm-hmm. And a way to look at things um that, that they're tough right now, but they're going to be okay long-term, right? Yeah. I think it goes back to uh, the two sides of the coins, a lot of ways to look at the Stockdale paradox that we talked about before, which if you haven't heard that one, you can go back and, and listen to it. But it really is about this guy, James Stockdale, and he's sort of a stoic, but he talked about how, you know, you can, you can simultaneously be very optimistic about the long-term future. And you know, he was the longest standing, highest ranking POW in the Hanoi Hilton during the Vietnam War. So not a pleasant place to be, right? Mm-hmm. He always had, in this example, faith that he would get home, right? That they would get out of there and they would be better off for it. Like he said, it would be, a, he knew it was going to be a life changing event for him. But at the same time, he was well rooted in how sucky things were right now for him. And I mean, no, of course, for him, right? But I think it's similar for us. Like right now, things aren't great. You know, fitness doesn't look great from the outside in. Um, Certainly a lot of the gyms we work in, are working with are really suffering. Some have gone out of business. Yep. But ultimately, there is a really big upside. So we're going to use a couple examples of that today. And the two sides of the coin are sort of like, well, a lot of these uh, challenges are opportunities. And you hear that a lot, sort of cliche. But it's true. And you think about it, even, you know, we talk about this even through relationships. It's like, oh, you know, I love my spouse because they're wild and crazy and they're very spontaneous. It's like, okay, that's the positive side of the coin, right? And then the flip side might be, oh, and I, and I hate it that they are never on time or, you know, <laughs> scattered or whatever. I'm like, well, you can't have it both ways. It's sort of like with our business right now. It's like, we're going to probably look at the negative side and then also what the positive could be from that. But it's very similar. So this, you right. can almost put this two sides of the coin lens on almost everything in your life because everything's a trade-off, mm-hmm. right? It really is. And so, Hopefully today we're going to be able to illuminate what the positive trade-offs are going to be in what essentially is a really, sure. really tough time right okay. now. Well, let's start with just, you know, fitness has been taking a beating, especially COVID um, going on. Um, so it could look kind of dark and gloomy on that one side of the coin. Um, give me that positive. Yeah. I mean, I, I think the estimation is that 30% of gyms will close, you know, by year's end. And I think what's happened is, when COVID first jumped off, there was a little bit of government support, whether you got the PPP or what have you. Mm -hmm. Um, And then everyone that was pretty savvy was looking down the road and I was having these high level conversations with folks and we're like, man, it's kind of Q3 and four or where it's going to be rough. And I don't think the reality set in for everyone until now. Right. So, you know, a lot of the industry folks I know that are working with lots of gyms, just like we are, are seeing the same things, which are a lot of gyms are now just starting to feel that crunch. Now, in some states, like if you're in California, like you don't have a choice, right? Right. New York City. I mean, there's some areas that are just really hard to do business, but mm-hmm. even in the areas where you're kind of allowed to be open, the climate's different. Yep. Take a percentage of the population that wants to exercise, right? Trying to move them into your gym. But at the same time, now you take a chunk of them and now they're now scared to go to the gym, right? Or there they're only 20% of the population works out. Yeah. And so take, used a, to. <laughs> so take maybe a quarter of that and say, well, they're not going to a gym right now until there's a vaccine or until their fears go down or whatever those things are. Right. Mm-hmm. So it makes it even more difficult. So really the the difficult part that everyone's struggling with every brand, every size gym, whether you're 50,000 feet or 1500 feet, it's client acquisition is really tough right now. Yep. Um, you know, you might land on something that's hot next week, next week, political climate changes. Now that thing's not hot. Right. So it's been a little bit of jockeying around to try to get folks to the gym for everyone. Yep. Um, and everyone's slowly starting to inch their way back, but it's painfully slow and it's just not keeping up with churn. Mm -hmm. And 
you know, we've seen that and we've got our two corporate gyms, our one gym here, same thing. It was like we jumped off hot when we were allowed to reopen, right? It was like, we're going to blow this thing up. We'll be back to normal before you know it. Right. But then, you know, the, the political climate got heated and the virus became like a big deal again. Um, and all of a sudden we saw even, you know, yeah, again, a lot of people got scared away again. Yep. Got scared away again. So we saw more churn. So it's mm-hmm. like, all right, we're keeping up with that. So we're on our normal growth trajectory. It's just not keeping up with the churn. Now the churn seems to have stabilized and hopefully with the hectic, you know, environment around the election, hopefully dying down, that'll help. But there is a flip side to all of this. And part of that is that it forces you to be better at your business. Mm-hmm. And, and what do I mean by that? Well, you know, I'll just be completely transparent about our business and where we've been. So we've always had this mothership gym. It's always done a really high revenue per square foot. And for the last 10 years, I've spent 99% of my time traveling around the world, you know, standing on a soapbox, telling people how to do personal training systems and why coaching is the answer for all their clients and their revenue and everything else. Right. Right. And so the gym was profitable, but really in a lot of ways by default, because things were just good and right. we had been here a long time. And so I kind of ignored it. If I'm honest, I really wasn't running as tight a ship as I could be. It was mainly, you know, in, in, in error, my thought process was like, look, just don't burn the place down. Let's keep making some decent money out of that place. Right. Mm-hmm. But I wasn't in here drilling down on the numbers like I should be if it was my sole source of income. Right. Right. Well, COVID jumps off. Of course, licensing is affected, right? Franchise sales have been a bit slower than we would like. I mean, all these things that have just made people nervous, everything's kind of slowed down, you know, around fitness right now. And so it, it's like, okay, well now I'm home. I've got time. Um, the gym's a little off. So let's dig in and start looking at our opportunities at our gym, right? Mm-hmm. You know, where are we too fat? Where are we inefficient? Where could we improve our systems? You know, is our sales system tight? I've leaned back into marketing, which I haven't done like yeah. brick and mortar B2C marketing, which I haven't done in a long time. And so all of those things I see is really good. You know, it's right. almost like, um, you know, we've used it. It's like, you're cleaning out a drawer in your house that's 30 years old and you open it and you're like, what is all this stuff? That's kind of what I've gone through during this time right. period. It's like, man, what are we doing? Right? Nothing bad. It's just imagine year over year over year getting further and further away from center. Right. Mm-hmm. And yeah. All of a sudden it's like, Whoa, whether it's payroll or this, I mean, all of these things happen. So the, the flips out of the coin, that's the bright side. And this, in this has been like, it makes you run a better business. Yeah. And, Everyone that's doing well right now that I've talked to, they almost feel guilty. Like, you know, it's fun, funny. They don't even want to admit like they're like, you know, I kind of hate to say it, but we're actually doing pretty good right now. I'm like, well, tell me what you mean. And I'm just speaking specifically to fitness. Obviously, there's certain business models mm. that are killing it right now, and they're actually benefiting from what's going on. Right. But brick and mortar fitness. Right. And they're saying, well, you know, I used this opportunity to trim some fat. I cut some expenses. I got down to the bare essentials of what we do. I drilled down on my numbers. And even though my top line revenue is down, I'm going to end up with as much, if not more net profit this year than I had last year. Yep. So there's a lot of people who do that. This is a human nature thing. Like right. you just let it coast, you get fat, right? So I think the the positive side is if you're running a good enough business, this has given you an opportunity to lean into your business a little bit more mm-hmm. and build more efficiency, look at your cost structure, um, look at your rates that you're charging, right? These levers that we've talked about on other podcasts, which of these levers are the most impactful, you know, really dig in and pull a lever or mm-hmm. put it on paper and see what it looks like. And so for me, I've been very thankful for that opportunity because again, just like James Stockdale, I'm fully confident that we're going to make it out of this because we were healthy enough going into it, right? That coming out of this, we're going to be way better off than we were yeah. going in. Like better, it's, better business, better business model we're running, right? Period. A, a completely better, yeah, a 100% a better business. Just because it's forced me, as an example, to lean into the business that we have. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it also helped us create this other franchise opportunity, right? It did. So, lo and behold, um, the other gyms that we work with, right, a lot of the gyms took our lead in creating this really small model, almost like an owner operator coach driven model. Mm-hmm. So Anthony's my partner over there and, and it's the women's only gym that we opened a few years ago. Well, that one's actually ahead of where we were last year. And probably because there's just more inherent trust. You've got like one, it's, it's like a brand behind a person, yep. right? That helps. It's smaller numbers. So you only need like a hundred to 120 people to, to make good money. Mm-hmm. Right. And so when you look at that, all of those models, not only ours, but the other ones in the industry that have done it based on our example, they're all at least as good as they were, if not ahead of the game. The ones that were at 200, 250, 300 clients and up, those are all the ones that that have taken a pretty good haircut, us included in our, in our bigger model. Mm -hmm. So because of that, to your point, we launched the, what we're calling a single pod model because our 
corporate model is two pods, right? Yep. So 12 people training at one time, membership from 250 to max 300, really good. Well, if you look at a one pod model at 100 to 120 members, right, you're doing really, really well. And so we're launching that model because it's less expensive. So people don't have to take as much financial risk to get into it. Yep. Still wildly profitable. And it appeals to someone who, you know, maybe you're a trainer that was working at a gym that isn't able to survive this. And mm -hmm. you're a fitness professional and you've got this book of clients or whatever. And you're like, what am I going to do? And you've been trying online coaching and that's crowded right now. And you're doing boot camps in the park, which that's okay, but right. it's good weather permitting. Right. So you're like, you know what? I want to make a run at it. I want to open my own gym. And we've had a lot of contact with these people. Right. Mm -hmm. And so now it's like, well, geez, we've got this one model that kind of prices them out of the market. Let's build a model for that you know, fitness professional that yep. wants to become their own gym owner. Let's give them all the business tools so they don't have to do it. They just can do what they've always done and open and, and, and have a very successful business and now be the entrepreneur that they've always wanted to be. So again, great flips out of the coin. Like, yeah. awesome. Here's, here's a model that we see across the board with all of our plethora of knowledge and, and, and examples. And these small models are doing well. So why wouldn't we launch that? That's actually more COVID proof than our larger model, even though the larger model is still making money. The little one is making even more money. Yeah. So it's like, awesome, let's 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 land on that. So again, another well, huge it's, upside. It's, it's huge upside for us. Opportunity. If you're a personal trainer, just you know, previous to this year, you're probably doing really well. Uh, maybe you didn't have to think about that. Maybe it was in the back of your mind, but now it's kind of like come out a little bit, like, oh gosh, now I gotta take a little bit more control of my own life. Well, here we go. We created an opportunity. It's an opportunity for you. I mean, it's yeah. I mean, that's I mean, where all these yeah. things go, right? Yeah. All right. Well, how about um you talked about, you know, maybe a little staff turnover and you're changing your systems and stuff. I mean, staff turnover is always hard. What are the um, upsides to that? Yeah, and that's tough. I mean, we, we just went through that, as you know, Matt, last week. So we have a great uh, teammate here on the team and he's been here 10 years, right? And so um, with our haircut of revenue, it again, it forced us to dig down and look at our business model. And, you know, we really can't afford to have as many full time employees as we had mm -hmm. on our team. Right. So we had to make a tough decision. And, you know, we, we went with a coach that's got more tenure here and then like she got the nod and this guy did not Right. And so, you know, we had to literally lay him off because a great guy did nothing. No fault of his. Well, there was a very visceral reaction from our clientele. Now, it's not like logically our clients can't be in here at certain hours and see that there's maybe not as clients as many clients as there used to be. And in this model, there's two coaches on the floor and there may only be, you know, each coach is coaching six people. Maybe one coach has three and the other coach has three. Well, it's not hard to envision that maybe one coach could coach six, right? right. Mm -hmm. Which is what the model, um, you know, that's basically the business model for it. Um, but it's still really tough. And so, you know, I try to get in the out in front of that message, right? Because I like our team, you know, isn't really involved in those decisions. And sometimes that comes like, it looks like this corporate companies coming in over the top and, and affecting the folks that work there. It's far from that, but I can understand why that would be the case. So we make this announcement. It's no good way to go about it. Um, you know, and we got a pretty visceral response again from clientele. And a lot of it was pretty nasty, I have to say, and it was directed at me. And I was okay. I'm prepared for that. And but at the same time, you know, it's I'm human like everyone else. And I don't expect people to feel sorry for me. I'm not the leader that's like, hey, I have to lay this guy off and everybody come console me. I mean, that's ridiculous. But at the same time, people that are listening to this will understand if you've been through it, right? Like it's a painstaking decision. Doesn't come easy. Mm -hmm. You don't want to do it, but you got to, you got to do it. Like it's, you, you know, you're in, you've got to keep your business alive. I mean, we've been here, what, 29 years. You don't do that by not making tough decisions, right? right. Even if they're not popular. So you make this decision, got flamed by clients. I mean, we're getting emails saying it was disgusting and this and that. It could have been the messaging, but at the same time, it's like, there's no really good way to put it. Right. Mm -hmm. But you know, as I thought about it, like as the week went along, it was the election and I think everybody was just emotionally charged and I knew that, but I was suffering from it as well. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I'm having the same response they are when people are like, you know, being directly, you know, not nice, you know, I'm reading these things. And by the end of the week, I'm like, Oh, it just had me all beat up. Right. Yep. But then I, I had a good chance to sit back and take a look at it. And again, that's the one side of the coin, right? It's like, it's a negative time. I'm having to lay someone off. Woe is me. All the clients are mad. You know, I'm the least favorite person ever. You know, you go through that whole song and dance, which is bullshit. So it's like, just as soon as you do that, what's the flip side? What's the other side of that coin? Well, how about this? Like if we didn't have really great services, 
mm-hmm. offered at a great price. If we didn't, if we didn't had a coach here for 10 years, paid at industry leading salaries with benefits and everything so that we could hang on to someone for 10 years, right? Mm-hmm. We wouldn't have these really dedicated impassioned clients, right? If they didn't feel like we were part of their extended family, they wouldn't be having that response, right? So at the end of the day, looking at the other side of the coin, not the dark side of like, oh, everybody's a mad and this is really hard and you know everything sucks right now. It's like, yeah, it does, but look at the bright side. The bright side is, well, this guy was great, right? Um, it's a good move for the business ultimately, so I'm convicted to stick with it. At the same time, look how impassioned our clients are. Look how, you know, look That's how awesome. serious they take it. Like the worst case scenario is if they were indifferent and just disappeared and didn't say anything. Yeah. Because in those tough conversations, you know, it also gave me the opportunity to really understand how much people cared for this person and for the business overall and what it meant to them personally. Mm -hmm. Because the letters were, even though they were pretty, you know, scathing and, and, and sharp at the same time, there was a lot of information in there about how much they loved it. Right. And so I chose to take that as like, well, awesome. Like we've built a great atmosphere We've got a great staff. I mean, it's not like I haven't been through this a bunch of times in right. 29 years, and it's never fun. It always sucks, but we always come out of it fine, and we move on, and the next great person comes along. And by the way, there's a systematic approach behind this whole thing that really helps mm-hmm. make those people great. And we, we're not taking credit for that, but you know what I'm saying, oh, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's the like next next person up as much as we love everybody. So anyway, I know that some of you guys have been through that. I've had conversations where you lay people off, and it's not necessarily their fault. And of course, it's just a horrible thing. And all and because your people are your product, your clients are going to get really upset. Mm-hmm. But if they, I would rather have them be really upset and be the person that they're really mad at and help them negotiate that over time, walk them through that, than I would, nobody gives a shit. I don't hear anything. And right. everyone just disappears and goes somewhere right. else. You want to gauge on your business. That's it, right? It, well, exactly. <laughs> and so like, hey, Props to Eric, who's not here anymore. I hate to see him go. Props to us. Props to our whole team for building a service and a product that is systematic enough to support anyone and that our clients recognize, right? right. And so we'll get through this. We'll be stronger yeah. on the other end. And we're not, we're not taking anything away from the individual that we had to let go. But that is the huge upside. And so once, you know, it took me five days of nasty grams to get to that point. But once I got there, it was like, oh, this is where that's coming from. Yeah. So I this mean, is all then, good. Even for that, for that individual, I mean, it's, there's going to be an upside for him. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, 10 years in the, under the same, in the same four mm-hmm. walls. So it's like, okay, I get it. There's, you know, um, you know, there's probably a huge silver lining on the mm-hmm. other side of this. Just, yeah. Just like we just talked about, could be getting his own bent gym. I mean, who knows? Yeah. <laughs> could be an alloy. It's not like we're in, it's not like we don't have a good relationship with yeah, him. Right, right. But yeah, I mean, we're working on some stuff there too. So all good, but I hope that helps people understand it. It's just that two sides of the coin. And it's always, it's, sometimes it's easy to get mired down. You're, you're, you're stuck in social media and you're just hearing nothing but negative news and getting confirmation bias and you're just worn out. And, you know, it just keeps you from making those tough decisions. But just keep in mind, there's always a, there's always a positive right. side. And again, I don't want to be too Pollyanna because I talk to people and they are really up against it, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, people that are millions of dollars in debt who are going to just hang it up and walk away. And that might be actually the upside, right? If you think about it in a lot of ways, like you don't go any deeper, like this is sure. it's done, head out, right? But if you're just having a hard time and you're fighting a good fight, like the upside is like, it's worth it. And if you make it through this, once this thing passes and everything passes, right, and we get to 2021, it might look a little bit different, but I can tell you that the market will have righted itself just like it did in nine, after 9-11, after the stock market crash of 08. And we survived all those and we came back stronger every single time. Yep. So I'm fully convinced we're going to do the same here. And that's, the again, the positive flip side. Yeah, so absolutely. I hope that helps anybody listen. Does that make sense? Yeah, man. It's great. All right, guys. Hope that's good. Have a happy week. This is Monday for us. So I was coming out on Wednesday. Have a great rest of your week and we'll talk to you next time. There you go. Thank Peace. you.